So hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to solve the problem smaller sum. So you are given an array of an integer for each index i. You have to find the sum of all integers present in the array with a value less than area. So let's understand the problem. So what is our aim? Our aim is to find for every index the sum of all integers which are present in the array with value less than area. So this is our aim. So let's understand. Let's say we are given this array. Okay. So this is a zeroth index. This is oneth index. This is twoth index. Okay. Now, now for oneth index, how many elements are smaller? For one, no element is smaller. We can see two and three all are greater. One is itself obviously equal. I want smaller elements. So here, sum will be zero. Now let's say I come to two. How many elements are smaller? I see three is not smaller. One is smaller. I will take this sum. Okay. Now for three, how many elements are smaller? I will say two and one are smaller. So I will say I, after taking the sum, this will be three. So answer will be zero, one, three. I have to return this vector. Okay. So how can we approach the question? So the brute force way that you think, what? Like for every index, for every index, what you will do, you will find the smaller elements in the nested loop. In big of and this, then big of and this, and you will sum them. So sum them side by side. So obviously it will take big of n square. I have to optimize it. So how can I optimize it? So first approach that I'm going to tell you like binary search approach. So binary search approach is something like within that, let's say I have an array like two, one, three. So you know for applying the binary search, you have to first sort the array. One, two, three. Now, let's say I come to 2. So, I will say, uh, so first for the binary search, I have to maintain a prefix sum. That means 1 for this sum will be 3. For this sum will be 6. So, I will say, when I come to this 2, when I come to this 2, so let's say I ask for 2, 4, 2, I will ask for 2. So, I will say all the elements which are less than 2. So, obviously within the sorted array, all the elements are less than 2 are wherever I found 2. All the elements before that will be less. So I will take the sum and add it as it is. Similarly, let's say I take 3. Let's say I take 3. So if I take 3, I want all the elements sum which are less than 3. So I go here in the binary search. I will say here is 3. So before that, sum is 3. Take it. Obviously, 1 and 2 sum will be 3. Okay. So this is a binary search approach. So you can apply this. So this is really easy. So I will be telling you you the another approach also okay this is something like map approach what we do like so in this approach we have first let's see what we are going to do let's create a map okay just see just see you will get it so one frequency is one two frequencies two that is two is coming two times four frequencies one okay now now we have got these frequencies now we will maintain the prefix sum for that Okay, so first write these frequencies here. These are the elements 1, 2, and 4. These are the unique elements in the array. And their frequencies are 1, 2, and 1. Okay, now for every element what I want, I want the sum of all previous elements in the sorted array. Okay, in the sorted way. So let's say I take this uh, prefix sum. Okay, you can say prefix sum or previous sum anything. Just the name of the name. Okay. Now, initially previous sum is 0. So, we'll add it as it is here. For this. Okay. So, I will say prefix sum of 1 will become 0. That for 1 element, prefix sum is 0. That is no elements are less than 1. Okay. Now, what I will do in the previous sum, I will add this 1 cross 1. Why? Why? Because 1, 1 is coming 1 time. That means, let's say 1 is 3 times. So, I will add 1 into 3. Because 1, 1, 1, 1 plus 1 plus 1. It is equal to 3. So obviously I will say that for 2, this 1 will be, whatever is the count of 1 will be taken. Okay. Because 1 is less than 2. So I will say prefix previous sum is obviously will become 1. Because 1 into 1 this. So I will add it here. Because for 2, this 1 is smaller. So for 2, the sum will become 1. Now, now, now I will do, now I'll same thing I will do 2 into 2 here. Why? Because 2 is repeating 2 times. So I will say 2 plus 2 is equals to 4. So instead of doing that, I will say 2 into 2 is equals to 4. Obviously, 
let's say 2 plus 2 plus 2 is equal to 6. If I do 2, you are 3 times 6. So I will say 1 plus 4 is equal to 5. That means previously, before 4, the sum is 5. We are going in a sorted position side by side. And this 5, this 5 will become previous sum for 4. Because obviously, for 4, these 2 and 1 are smaller. So for 4, this will become 5. And after that, I will add the loop will end. So just this is the prefix sum that I got. So obviously, this is the answer 0, 1, 5. This is only the answer. Now, now what I will do when I traverse this array 1, 2, 2, 4. So whatever is the answer 1, add it. 2, add it. 2, add it. 4, add it. So like this. So just this is the approach. Now, what we are doing, just this direct. We are maintaining the count in a sorted position. Why? Why in sorted position? So that so that we can access to element one by one because every time I want smaller element. Let's say if I take seven, will it make sense? No, obviously seven should come later. For seven, these all are smaller. So obviously that means I am maintaining the sorted in, in the sorted position. So one thing that you may ask that why you are not maintaining the vector. Okay, so let me tell you. Like if I maintain the vector, okay, so I want the count of every element. So vector and count, what it will be? It will be like maximum, maximum element because at most, let's say I have here 1001. Okay, so for 1001, I have to make the array of 1002 obviously. So max C plus 1. Okay, so I will say initially count is 0. Now, just see the constraint. Constraint is 10 to the power 9. Now, if can I create the array of 10 to the power 9? Obviously not. I can at most make 10 to the power 7 global size array. So how can I make it? So either now this solution will accept somehow. But after some hour, this solution will not accept if the test cases are changed. Because test cases are not modified accordingly. I saw that. Okay. So obviously we, we are using map. Because you know, you know the map size at most can be 10 to the power 9, 5. Why? Because we have only 10 to the power 5 elements. So map can be if every element is unique. So I can have at most 10 to the power 5 key value pairs. Okay. So that's why. That's why I am maintaining the map. Because otherwise it will become bigger of n. Why? Because obviously. Obviously I will. Uh, because storing in vector it will take bigger of n. And vector is in sorted position. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, like. But. But. We can't create the area of 10 to the 9. That's why we have to forcibly implement the map. Okay. And other approach is binary search. So both approach takes big O of n log n time complexity. But for binary search, binary search space is big O of n by for prefix sum maintaining. Because otherwise I have to loop, run other loop for taking the previous sum. So for that, let's say I have 1, 2, 4. So I will say prefix sum is 1. Similarly, prefix sum is 3, prefix sum is 7. So obviously, what I will going to do, let's say I come to 2, I will say the prefix sum is 3. So that's why, big of n. Similarly, for uh, this is a space complex of binary search, for above code, space complexity will be big of n plus n. Because for another map frequency, for another map prefix sum. Okay, so approximately it will be big of n. So you get it, big of n log n is time, and big of n is space. So you get this. So let's try to code up the map okay so initially we will create a ordered map actually map why because we want the frequencies in sorted order so that we can go in a order sorted order okay so unordered map just see unordered map array for this so what it will be going to store it will be going to store the frequency of every element what it will be going to store prefix sum prefix sum Till every element. Okay. Now, now let's go to every array position. Okay. Now MP of array I plus plus. That means increment the frequency. Obviously, this is a basic thing. Now, previous sum is zero. For every index, for every element, we have to find the previous sum. So for auto IT call it MP. Now we traverse this sorted array. Okay. Like we have, we were doing here. This sorted map, whatever was this map, we are using that. Okay. Now, now within that map, we will say prefix sum of it first is equal to previous sum. That means uh, whatever is the element because 
let's say this one is the element. Let's say I, I am writing again it here. 1, 2, 4 and 1, 2, 1. This is the element, this is the frequency. So I will say for this 2, this is the IT first. This is the IT second, that is frequency for the map. So I will say for IT first, what I will do, pre previous sum is initially 0. Now, if I add this, previous sum 1 into 1, then I will put it here. So, just what I will do, previous sum IT first is equal to previous sum. And then, previous sum for next element will be the current index answer will be added to next element because current index will be the previous for next one. So I will say previous sum plus is equals to id dot second that is element into how many times it comes. Okay. Because 2 plus 2 plus 2 obviously can be written as 2 into 3. Okay. Where 3 is the frequency. Now, now we will create a vector to store the answer. Now we are getting LL. This is the macro that I have created. Let's create this macro. Long, long int. Okay. Now, now we will traverse this array again to store the answers of the every index. We will say LL current answer is equal to previous sum of array of i. Okay. That means for every element, whatever is the previous pre-sum that we got, we will uh, store it in current answer variable and just push back current answer. This I am storing it variable to maintain the clarity. Otherwise, it is not required, obviously. And add then return answer. So, one thing that you may ask that, let's say I have this 1, 2, 4. Why am I not taking 3? Why am I not taking 3? So, this is a count 1, this is 2, and this is 1. This count is obviously 0. So, should I ask this 3? Prefix sum? No. I will never ask this. Why? Why? Because, because I am adding those elements in the map which are in the array. So, obviously, obviously I will not be going to ask this 3. That's why, that's why storing the 3 is not required. If I will be going to ask, then I have to store it. But within this question, obviously, we are taking array elements. So, so that means 3 will never be counted. So, storing the 3 is not required. Okay. So, now, this is the code. So, let's try to compile the code and check whether it's working fine. Let's submit the code. So yes, it's totally working fine. So this was all about code. If you like the explanation, please like, share and subscribe to my channel. Thank you and have a nice.